Alerting Applications. In this tutorial, we will describe alerting applications, mark objects reverse queries, and the reverse query index. We'll describe alerting configuration components. We'll add alert actions and rules. Invoke alert rules explicitly, and also learn about invoking alert rules with Content Processing Frameworks Alerting Pipeline. Companies are increasingly dealing with ever-growing volumes of fluid information. Users often need information as soon as it's available. As information ages, its value rapidly decreases, and late delivery of critical information negatively impacts responsiveness. This delayed response may lead to lost opportunities. Consider consumer technologies like Twitter, Google Alerts, or mobile devices. All add immediacy to information delivery. Sometimes the nature of an application is that new information is arriving quickly and users want to be notified when something new arrives that will interest them. By providing an alerting framework, MarkLogic helps organizations meet their real-time alerting and delivery needs. Organizations can maximize the value of their information and save time and effort that would otherwise be spent running repetitive searches. The Alerting API is implemented as an XQuery library module, callable from either MarkLogic server-side JavaScript or XQuery. The API is designed to help you build robust alerting applications. It handles the details for security in the application, as well as provides mechanisms to set up all of the components of an alerting application. It is designed to make it easy to use triggers and content processing framework, abbreviated CPF, to keep the state of documents being alerted. Alerting applications require a valid alerting license key. Alerting applications are built using reverse queries. The license key is required to use the reverse index and to use the alerting API. At the heart of all alerting applications is the Mark Logic reverse query. Queries can be serialized and stored in the database as documents or parts of other documents. Reverse queries function opposite from regular Mark Logic queries. They use documents or parts of documents to find serialized queries stored in the database. Enable the reverse query index to speed up these searches. The fast reverse searches setting in the database configuration should be set to true to enable this index. Alerting applications typically allow individual users to create their own rules for what and when they would like to be alerted. Therefore, there are some inherent security requirements in alerting applications. Temporary permissions to call certain functions, called AMPs, give users alerting functionality without exposing the functions directly. By providing the needed privileges only in the context of the alerting application, users can run queries that they might not be privileged to run in a controlled way. For example, if they need to look at configuration information or update that information. There are two predefined roles designated for use in alerting applications created using the alerting API. The alert-admin and the alert-user roles abstract all the complex security logic to enable you to create an application that properly deals with security and eliminates having to manage the security yourself. The scenario we will create in this tutorial is a bookstore example. Customers may wish to be notified when books from certain authors or having certain titles arrive in the bookstore's inventory. As new books arrive in inventory, part of the bookstore's processes include creating documents about books to sell and storing those documents in a MarkLogic database. The Alert API and MarkLogic's content processing framework can notify customers when books that meet their interests are added to the inventory. Three core components, 
the alert config, actions to execute when an alert fires, and rules for firing alerts help build robust alerting applications. The alerting API handles the details for security in the application and provide mechanisms to set up these components. The API makes it easy to use triggers and content processing framework to keep the state of documents being alerted. The alert config is an XML representation of an alerting configuration for an alerting application. The alert configuration is used to tie all the parts of the alert together by way of the config URI. The config URI is the first thing you need to decide when creating an alerting application. Typically, an alerting application needs only one alert config, although you can have many if you need them. Alerting application administrators must have an alert-admin role to create or update alert config documents. The alerting API defines an XML representation of an alert config, and that XML representation is a return from the makeConfig function. The alert config XML is then stored in the database using the config insert function. The alert configuration is used to tie all the components of an alert together by way of its config URI. The Bookstore web application will use a unique config URI to bind alert actions and alert user rules together. A web application has previously been created. The web application is being hosted in a MarkLogic HTTP application server. A MarkLogic database called Bookstore was created for the Bookstore inventory content. An additional MarkLogic database called Bookstore Triggers is used to store triggers that will be created by the alerting API. In the configuration for the Bookstore database, the Fast Reverse Searches setting has been enabled to support reverse query indexes. We are now ready to add alerting to our Bookstore web application. An alert configuration is needed to use the alert API. Since we are using server-side JavaScript, use declare update when changing the database. We'll be inserting a new document with information given in the alert configuration. The XML configuration document will be inserted into a MarkLogic database. In Query Console, the content source determines the database, so the code checks to ensure it is correct. Include the alert API functions. The alert API's makeConfig function returns a JavaScript object to be inserted into the database with the config insert function. The first function parameter is a label, referred to as a uniform resource identifier, or URI, that will uniquely identify this alert configuration. The URI is important since it ties in all three alert API components. The second parameter is a short name or label for this configuration. The third parameter is a longer description for this configuration. The fourth parameter is for any other options. The configuration is inserted into the database as an XML document. The URI of the document will be the URI given as part of the makeConfig function suffixed by XML. If we run this code, an alert configuration will be inserted into our bookstore database. We can explore the content of the database and view the configuration. An alerting application administrator must also set up actions to be performed when an alert occurs. The alert's action is simply what will happen when the alert is triggered. The config URI needs to be included when creating the action. Alert actions are represented in XML returned by the makeAction API function. The action XML contains a designated short name for the action and can contain a description of what happens when the action occurs. You must also specify where the action module is stored. It is easy to retrieve this information using MarkLogic functions. A specific action module 
must also be assigned. The XML is then stored in the database with the Alert API's Action Insert function. XQuery modules implement alert actions. When creating an alert action module, external variables are available for referencing the alert config URI, the document currently being processed, the alert rule XML document that triggered this action, and the alert action XML document. In this example, the log-action.xquery module is referenced by an action already inserted. The title element within the document that triggered this action's rules is logged to the MarkLogic error log. Again, we are using server-side JavaScript, so use declare update when changing the database. We'll be inserting a new document containing the information given for the alert action. After checking the content source is correct, we include the alert API functions. The alert API's make action function returns a JavaScript object that gets inserted into the database. The first parameter is a short name or label for this action. The second parameter is a longer description for this action. The next parameter is the database ID of the module's database that will store the module implementing this action. Next is the root in the previous parameters module's database. The fifth parameter is the URI of the module implementing the action. The last parameter is for any other options. The action data is inserted into the database as an XML document. The URI of the document will be the concatenation of the configuration URI given as part of the makeConfig function, the string slash action slash, the value of the action name, then suffixed with XML. Clicking Run will insert this action into our database. We can view the XML by clicking the Explore button. A rule is the criteria for which a user is alerted combined with a reference to an action to perform if that criteria is met. For our bookstore example, people may be interested in certain titles or authors of books currently not in inventory. Rules can be created to notify them when books of interest are added to the bookstore's inventory and combine those rules with an appropriate action, such as to email them. Alerting applications are designed to support large numbers of rules with fast, scalable performance. For alerting applications to scale to large numbers of rules, MarkLogic administrators should enable fast reverse searches in the database configuration. Like the other two alert components, rules are represented by XML returned from an alert API function. The make rule function in the example will create XML containing a short name of simple and a description of healthcare. The rule will take the appropriate action as the given user when the criteria is met. A query is specified which will be serialized and stored with this rule document. In this example, a user is interested in new or changed content that matches the search for healthcare. The rule also has an action associated with it, which will be performed when new or changed documents match the query. Alerting applications are designed to support large numbers of rules with fast, scalable performance. In the browser, the Bookstore Tutorial web application displays what is currently in inventory. I am interested in the author Herman Melville, but I already own the books in the bookstore's inventory. So I'll take advantage of the bookstore's alerting feature to get notified when new titles from Herman Melville arrive. In this example, we are requesting to be notified when the bookstore receives new books in inventory by the author Herman Melville. So in the author field, I'll fill in Herman Melville. We are also providing our name and email address. For this tutorial, an actual name and email address is not needed. 
A test document will be created in the bookstore database instead of a real email being sent. We click Submit to submit the form data. A confirmation is given that an alert was created for me. Clicking the Thank You button returns back to the main inventory list. When the form data was submitted, the web application code created an alert rule for the currently logged in user. The XQuery function that creates the rule is an XQuery module, form-action.xqy. The XQuery module was called as the web application's form action when the user clicks the submit button. The form data is sent to this module for processing. This XQuery module creates a new rule for the user and inserts it into the bookstore database. The alert API rule insert function requires the following, the URI from the alert configuration, and XML created from the alert API's make rule function. The make rule function has the following parameters, a name for this alert rule, a description for the rule, the ID of the user for the rule. Passing a value of zero means to use the ID of the current user in the web application. A CTS query that will be serialized. In this tutorial, we're using an OR query to look in either the Book Inventory XML Documents title element for the requested title text or the author element for the requested author text. The name of the action to invoke when documents are matched to the above query by a reverse query. Rule options can be specified, perhaps to pass in other data when processing the rule. In this rule, we are storing the name and email address of the person submitting the form. The alert API rule functions can be called from either XQuery or JavaScript. We are using XQuery functions since the tutorial web application was created using XQuery. Rules can be applied by calling alert functions, creating triggers, or using Content Processing Framework's alerting pipeline. The Find Matching Rules function returns a list of rules that match a given document. Spawn matching actions will spawn tasks on the MarkLogic task server to asynchronously execute all actions for rules that match a given document. Invoke matching actions is similar to spawn matching actions, except the actions are executed synchronously. All alert API functions can be called from either JavaScript or XQuery. Triggers can be created by the alert API to respond to database commit events for documents of interest. The trigger data contains the alert config URI and thus can find rules matching the document causing the commit event. Content Processing Framework can find matching rules by documents being processed by CPF. If any rules are found, the actions are taken. We will verify our bookstore's alert action and alert rule using the alert API's invoke matching action function in Query Console. The author in the document is set to Herman Melville to meet the rule criteria created by the alerting application. The alert.invokeMatchingActions function takes the following arguments. The alert config URI from the alert configuration. A document node to use for matching any rules. This testing document will not be inserted into the database, but we could if we wanted to. Options, if any, to pass. In XQuery, the options would be children of an options node. In JavaScript, the options would be within an options property. We'll click the Run button, and we get the message that the rule test is complete. To verify, we'll click the Explore button. A document was created with the URI beginning with slash alert-test slash. This is the test document created by the action module in response to invoking our rule. The document contains information such as the date and time that the rule was invoked, the email address as submitted by the user, and an email to be sent at a later time. For performance reasons, it's likely that emails would not be sent with each individual rule being invoked, but could be queued up to be sent at a later time. 
Storing them in documents is one approach to queuing them. Alerting applications built with the Alerting API can be used with Content Processing Framework. CPF provides state for documents, so it's easy to use CPF to keep track of when documents in a particular scope is created or modified, then do an action on those documents. Alerting applications can run reverse queries on changed documents, then fire alerts for any matching rules. There are pre-built CPF pipelines for alerting. The alerting pipeline runs alerts on all new and changed documents within the scope of the CPF domain attached to the pipeline. The alerting pipeline can be used along with other CPF pipelines, such as conversion. It is designed with a priority such that it runs after all the other pipelines, giving alerts a final view of content. Content processing was previously installed for the bookstore database. A CPF domain was created called Alert Book Customers, and two MarkLogic pipelines were configured for that domain, Status Change Handling and Alerting. The alert configuration previously created in this tutorial must be aware of the CPF domain for the alerting pipeline to be able to call our action. This code will make updates to the alert config documents stored in the bookstore database, so declare update is called. After checking to verify the content source in Query Console is set to the bookstore database, we include the alert function. Get the current alert config document with the config get alert function. Save the domain name of alert book customers in the new configuration XML with the config set CPF domain names alert function. Update the configuration document with the new XML using the config insert alert function. We click the run button. We can click the explore button to verify that the changes were made. Selecting our configuration URI, the config name has been successfully saved to the alert config document. Similar to our previous alert test, this code creates a test document and inserts it into the bookstore database. Note the document has an author element with a value of Herman Melville, matching the criteria of the previously created rule. The code creates a URI for the new document that is a combination of the author name and the ISBN, matching the pattern of the other sample documents. Clicking the Run button, the message file test complete is displayed. Clicking the explore, we can see that a new alert has been placed into our database. In this tutorial, you learn the components of an alerting application, reverse queries, and the reverse query index, creating alerting configurations, actions, and rules, invoking alert rules, Enabling the CPF alerting pipeline when inserting or updating documents to invoke actions according to existing rules. Code examples can be found at MarkLogic University's GitHub repository at github.com slash marklogicuniversity slash alert apps. For a complete selection of on-demand topics, please visit mlu.marklogic.com slash on-demand or download the MarkLogic mobile app, which is available from both the Apple App Store and Google Play. And don't forget to show off what you've learned. Add MarkLogic as a skill on your LinkedIn profile today. Thank you for watching this MarkLogic University on-demand tutorial.